Hi guys, how are you all and welcome back to this uh, awesome India's chart revision session, especially in English. So, today's topic is India's 19 employee benefits. It is again a very important topic. First of all, let me tell you that uh, while discussing this topic, I will refer some important questions also because uh, to, to discuss some important concepts from this chart book, I have to refer some questions. Now, questions from which, which material? Basically, the material is top 164 important questions pdf list so make sure you have this pdf if you don't have the pdf see the description and in the description box you will get the pdf notes of this all uh, the all topics important 164 questions all right so okay let's start so we are discussing india's 19 employee benefits guys first of all let me tell you one thing overall this has the liability image basically this india's 19 has some liability image see some of the standards are having asset images some of the standards are having special india's images so this india's is one of the liability based india's technically employer who is giving salary or other employee benefits to his employees has to book the liability towards employee cost okay because the employee has rendered the services so this is technically the liability based NDS, but yes, of course, there is some asset also which is involved in this NDS. First of all, let us talk about the applicability of all employee benefits. See, this NDS 19 is applicable on all type of benefits except the, uh, the, the, the share based payments, uh, ESOPs, which are allowed to the employees so because that is covered under India's 102. So, except for share based payments allowed to the employees in the form of ESOP, this NDS is applicable to all type of employee benefits now you will definitely ask me sir what are the type of employee benefits so this is the second number thing there are overall uh, the employee benefits can be broadly classified into four categories short term employee benefits other long term employee benefits post employment employee benefits and terminal benefits so these are the broad four categories of employee benefits the first is short term employee benefits now short term employee benefits means which are payable uh, within one year which are payable uh, within 12 months of the date of service or of the balance sheet date so these are the salaries incentives bonus allowances overtime expenditure and all these mostly all kind of short term employee benefits are charged to profit and loss account in the year in which they are incurred Yes, there are some important points in respect of short-term employee benefits. I will discuss later on through this point, the last point. Okay, so this short-term employee benefits is not much important. Okay, only one thing is important that is short-term compensated absence. I will discuss it later on. The second and third, these two are common. Like other long-term employee benefits, these are long-term. And post-employment employee benefits, matlab, these are also long-term. Technically, post-employment employee benefits means the employee benefits which are payable to the employee after the retirement. So, technically, it becomes a long-term because the employee will retire after, after so many years. And other long-term employee benefits are also long-term. But other long-term employee benefits are not payable at retirement. It is payable during the service. Okay, during the employment service. So, if the bonus is payable after five years, if the, if the leave encashment is payable after 5 years, so bonus, leave encashment, these are payable after 5 years, so other long term. If the gratuity is payable after retirement, pension is payable after retirement, these are, provident fund is payable after retirement, these are post-employment employee benefits. Technically, the, the these two, the treatment, accounting treatment of these two is same. So, whatever we will discuss in, re in respect of these two will be the same treatment. Okay. And the last benefit are the terminal benefits. Terminal benefits like these are VRS expenditure. Like terminal benefits means we need to terminate the employee service before its retirement. So, the employee's service has been terminated before the retirement and we have to pay the compensation to them. So, these are terminal benefits. So, terminal benefits are directly char charged to the profit and loss in which in the year in which it is incurred. So, terminal benefits is that's all. No other treatment is involved. Now, let's come to the main two uh, employee benefits that is other long term employee benefits and post employment employee benefits. Now, whatever I will discuss for these two will be common. So, as far as these two are concerned, all these two are further classified into two categories post employment employee benefits and other long term employee benefits overall. These two can be further classified into two categories. Defined contribution plans, defined benefit plans. Now, what is this defined contribution and defined benefit? See, employer and employee. Employee has given service. Employer has to compensate in the, in the name of salary and whatever other things. Now, 
अदर देन सैलरी देर आर सो मेनी अदर टाइप ऑफ बेनिफिट लाइक ग्रेच्युटी पेंशन प्रोविडेंट फंड ओके दीज आर अदर देन द अदर देन द रिकरिंग बेनिफिट ओके इंप्लॉई गेट अगेंस्ट द सर्विसेस ऑफ कॉस्ट नाउ दीज आर काइंड ऑफ लॉन्ग टर्म विच आर फर्दर क्लासिफाइड इन टू डीसीपी एंड डीबीपी डीसीपी डिफाइंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन नाउ डिफाइंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन मीन्स इंप्लॉयर विल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट इन अ फिक्स अमाउंट जस्ट लाइक द एग्जाम्पल इज प्रोविडेंट फंड वॉट इज द वॉट इज द फीचर ऑफ प्रोविडेंट फंड अंडर प्रोविडेंट फंड इंप्लॉयर हैज टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टूवर्ड्स इंप्लॉय कॉस्ट अ फिक्स अमाउंट i think if i am not wrong the 12% so employer has to contribute a fixed amount out of its pocket and that fixed contribution becomes the employee cost becomes the employee benefit cost for the employer so defined contribution plan means defined means fixed contribution means the out of pocket expenditure which employer has to bear for the employee so these are the defined contribution plan defined uh, defined benefit plans defined benefit plans means defined means fixed benefit means final final output for the employee final output for the employee so defined benefit plans means suppose i am the employer and i announced one dpp defined benefit plan for my employee now what is that uh, defined benefit plan i told my employees that after 5 years of services i after 5 years of their successful service i will give them 20% bonus of their last drawn salary multiplied by their number of years of service okay so i announced one defined benefit plan in which i will give them i will give them the final amount i will give them as 15% of their salary multiplied by number of years of services this is the final amount i will give them final amount i will give them okay so what is the final amount the final amount is already defined it is already fixed so there are two concepts basically one concept is i am contributing to the employee out of my expense uh, pocket and the accumulation of such contribution the final accumulation of such contribution will be the benefit so i decided to contribute every year 50 50 50 50 so at the time of already fixed okay so let us understand the difference uh define define contribution plan employer's contribution is fixed here employer contribution may not be fixed see in this defined benefit the final benefit is fixed so to provide that benefit how much amount i should contribute today in this year in the next year in the ne next year it is not fixed maybe i need to contribute more in the first year and less in the second year but under defined contribution plan the amount of contribution is fixed actuarial and investment risk is on the employee agreed when uh, agree uh, sorry actuarial and investment risk is on the employer now what is this actuarial and investment risk basically actuarial risk investment risk means uh, i am here employer says i am here just to make the contribution now what will be the overall benefit that is your concern your matlab employees concern that is not my concern okay so that is your concern only what will be the final benefit whether the benefit will be uh, better or worse it is your concern so entire risk is on you but here in defined benefit plan the risk is on me because i have already defined the final amount of benefit so to provide that final amount of benefit sometimes i need to pay more so the risk is on the employer actuarial assumptions are not required under defined contribution plans the actuaries assumptions are not required in defined benefit plans the actuaries assumptions are required entire contribution expenses charged to profit and loss whenever the employer contributes any amount under defined contribution plan just like pf employer has to charge it uh, has to charge it to the pnl but under defined benefit plan we need to apply the projected unit credit method we need to apply this method projected unit credit method now frankly speaking the accounting of defined contribution plan is not so much 
important because it is right like whatever the amount contributed we have for the employee it is our expense but the the the, the main important accounting is for defined benefit plan which is discussed under projected unit credit method and that is important actually and based on that the question may be asked so we will discuss now we will discuss the projected unit credit method accounting of defined benefit plan in this point number 4 as well as point number 5 also so in the point number 4 we will define we will discuss the accounting for defined benefit plan so under accounting for dbp now accounting for dbp defined benefit plans you have to record two most important things one is the liability in the name of defined benefit obligation and one the asset in the name of plan asset now first of all before con before continuing further first of all please understand why we are creating this liability and creating this asset first of all liability why we are creating liability frankly speaking if you are if you are my employee and you have already given me the service suppose i told you that i will give you after 5 years i will give you the long term bonus okay after 5 years i will give you long term bonus so from today onwards after 5 years i will give you bonus and suppose the estimated amount of bonus will be 1 crore will be 1 cr okay now out of that 5 years 1 year service has been given to me now you have given me one year service so frankly speaking out of five year service you have given me one year service so technically the uh, proportionate amount of bonus has been accrued i will give you definitely after five year only but the proportionate amount in respect of first year has been accrued so if it has been accrued from my side i have to book the liability technically understood or not so why i am creating liability because you are giving me first year service then the proportionate amount of the final bonus amount i have to book as a liability again the second year is over you have given me the service i have to book the second year's liability third year liability fourth year liability fifth year liability and after fifth year i will pay you so why i am creating liability because you are giving me the service th that is uh, uh, the amount has been accrued now why asset frankly speaking to pay you in is so much amount so you are not only one my employee na there are so many employees so i have announced this bonus plan for my hundreds thousands of employees so i need the funds for that so from where i will i will arrange these funds from today onwards i will start investing my money somewhere outside the company i will start investing my money and that investment is known as plan asset so why liability because services are are getting received so it should be booked the expense should be booked on accrual basis why asset because uh, from today only i have to start investing the some money so that after 5 years i will be able to pay you the particular amount of defined benefit plan are, are you guys understood understanding or not so this is the concept of creating liability and asset now how to create liability how to create asset first of all let us understand the terms under defined benefit liability there is one term called current service cost and the other term is called interest cost now what is current service cost it's simple uh, i told you few minutes back that uh, you gave me first year service you gave me first year service so the proportionate amount of bonus should be should be uh, should be accrued so that proportionate amount which is actually accrued is the current service cost okay but i'll not pay you right now i'll pay you after 5 years so on this accrued amount the interest will be charged because see you have given me your service right now but i am not paying you right now i will pay you in the future so that proportionate amount of expenditure which i should pay you for the services you have given me that is called current service cost currently you gave me the service and i have to bear the cost of that service and that cost of service is the total defined benefit and i will pay you in the future so definitely on such cost interest would be charged so these are the two terms this current service cost and interest cost i will tell you how to calculate but these are once they are calculated these are charged to profit and loss account now let let us not discuss plan asset right now let us first of all discuss this defined benefit liability current service cost and uh, interest cost for this i will refer i will refer one question now i have told you that uh, i will refer the questions from this pdf so just refer the question number 79 which i have given in the important list now what is the question number 79 overall this is a company whose net worth is 150 crore that doesn't matter uh, it has so many employees and it has announced the uh, announced some uh, options the company initially did not have any hr function but over the last two years the management set up the function and now hr department takes care of all the benefits 
ओके 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 वन ऑफ द एम्प्लॉय बेनिफिट इन लॉस नाउ दिस इज वन ऑफ द एम्प्लॉय बेनिफिट इन लॉस इन्वॉल्व लमसम पेमेंट टू एम्प्लॉय ऑन द टर्मिनेशन ऑफ सर्विस लमसम पेमेंट टू एम्प्लॉय ऑन द टर्मिनेशन ऑफ सर्विस दट मीन इट इज अ पोस्ट एम्प्लॉयमेंट एम्प्लॉय बेनिफिट एंड दट इज इक्वल टू वन परसेंट ऑफ द फाइनल सैलरी फॉर ईच ईयर ऑफ सर्विस नाउ हाउ मच बेनिफिट वी आर गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड वन परसेंट ऑफ द फाइनल सैलरी दट इज कॉल्ड डी बी पी द बेनिफिट द फाइनल अमाउंट ऑफ बेनिफिट विच विल बी विच इज पेबल टू द एम्प्लॉय इज ऑलरेडी फिक्स इट इज डिफाइंड वन परसेंट ऑफ द सैलरी now for defined benefit plan we need actuarial assumptions because once the service will be will get over uh, how much the salary will be in the future these all are assumptions and actuary will give us the assumption consider the salary in year 1 is 10000 average and is assumed to increase at 7% per, uh, every year now this 7% is given by actuary okay. taking a discount rate 10% discount rate present value factor we need so 10% is the discount rate which is given by actuary okay now Uh, it asks us uh, to calculate the total defined benefit now now please try to understand please try to understand technically what was the salary salary is 10000 salary is 10000 okay and how many number of years of service are there number of services or year, year of uh, number of year of service are there uh, yes taking a discounted okay being the benefit and the obligation in respect of this benefit for an employees who is expected to leave at the end of 5 year so expect to leave at the end of 5 year so i have to calculate for 5 year so 10000 uh, in the first year the salary is 10000 in the first year the second year it would be 10000 plus 7% that means uh, 10700 the third year would be 11235 then 11790 uh, 7 96.75 Plus seven percent, and then the final salary will be twelve two sixty two six twenty two year six twenty three. So this is the final salary. Technically, after all increments, this will be the final salary. And of this salary, of this salary, employee will get one percent for five years for each year of service. See, one percent for each year of service. So do this one two six two three into one percent into one percent. Into five. So in totality, the defined benefit plan defined. Uh, this is six thirty one. This is six thirty one. It is expected benefit to be paid. Expected benefit to be paid. This is the final amount of benefit to be paid after five years. Understood or not? Six thirty one. Final salary one percent into five years of service. Six thirty one. This is the expected benefit to be paid. Now what you will do? You will do six thirty one whole divided by five because there are five years of service. the every year is 631 divided by 5 the every year becomes 126 the every year becomes 126 are you guys understanding or not are you guys understanding or not ha huh? let me check 10000 plus 7% plus 7% plus 7% plus 7% oh i did wrong i think hmm So salary would be what is the salary would be salary would be ten thousand in the first year then plus seven percent plus seven percent plus seven percent and plus seven percent the salary will be salary for fifth year the salary for fifth year what will be the final salary that one percent of the final salary will be counted so ten thousand plus seven percent plus seven percent plus seven percent plus seven percent it is thirteen thousand. One zero eight. So the final salary will be this into one percent will be the benefit for each year of service. Each year of service, the benefit will be paid for each year of service of five years. So overall benefit, overall the expected benefit, the expected benefit would be six fifty five. The expected benefit will be would be six fifty five for five years. For five years. So can you please tell me the expected benefit per year? Expected benefit. Expected benefit per year. Expected benefit per year. Six fifty five divided by five. Six fifty five divided by five. So it is one thirty one. One thirty one is the expected benefit per year. Now how to calculate current service cost? C S C. Current service cost. One year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. One thirty one. 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 Technically, what is this? These all are the future values. These are the future values. Okay. Now. 
consider consider this fifth year fifth year amount as soon as the employee will give me fifth year of service 131 of the fifth year is will be payable immediately so it will be payable immediately so the present value of fifth year in the fifth year the present value of 131 will be same but fourth year when the when 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 employee will give me service for the fourth year now employee will give me service for the fourth year i have to pay this 131 uh, at the end of fifth year so this 131 is payable at the end of one year so i have to make a discounting of one year okay so what was the discounting what was the discount rate the discount rate was 10 percent so discount rate was 10 percent that means 0 0.909 now i have to uh, show the discounting rates in reverse order. Why reverse order? Because 131 is payable at the end of fifth year. 131, four, fourth year's 131 is payable at the end of fifth year. Third year's payable at the end of fifth year. Second year's payable at the end of fifth year. This 131 is also payable at the end of fifth year. So consider this first 131. This 131 is technically the future value which I have to pay after four years. Now because this is uh, due at uh, this is accrued at the end of first year but to be paid at the end of fifth year so i have to make a discounting for four years okay 0 0.909 0 0.826 0 0.751 0 0.683 so i have to make a reverse discounting and in this way i'll get the current service cost so this is the amount i got from current service cost is uh, see this current service cost how we got in the uh, the current service cost how we got uh, 131, 131 into 0.909, so it becomes 119, okay, and then it becomes 108, it becomes 98, it becomes 89, so see this, how we got current service cost, the first year's current service cost is 89, second year 98, 108, 119, 131. This is how we got the current service cost. So this is how we can calculate the current service cost. Now after calculating current service cost, every year we have to calculate the interest on such current service cost. So in the first year, you booked 89 as a current service cost. What journal entry you will do? Uh, current service cost account debit to D B O liability, defined benefit obligation liability. This is your expenditure. This is your employee benefit expenditure and this is the liability which you are not paying right now. You will pay after four years, after three years, after two years and so on. So this is this is how we used to create the current service cost. And by creating current service cost from the next year onwards, we create the interest cost also because this 89 will become the closing balance. In the second year, it becomes the opening balance and on opening balance, we will calculate the 10% interest cost of 9. In the same way, service cost of second year will be recorded. Total Overall total closing balance is 196. In the third year, it will be 196 opening and we will calculate the interest on 196 that is 20 rupees. So, this is how we used to calculate the interest cost. Now, you got the point. So, look at this. How to calculate the following items? Current service cost. So, current service cost, discounted value of estimated annual benefits. What was the annual benefit? These were the annual benefits. These were the annual benefits. And I have made the discounting of these annual benefits. Understood or not? Okay. Discounting to be made downstream. You understood the downstream? No. Actually, no. It should be upstream. I think it should be upstream. Upstream. Discounting should be to be made as upstream. Upstream means uh, niche se upar. You understood na? Niche se upar. First you have make into 1, then 0 0.909 upstream. Discount to be done upstream. Okay. Uh, from later years to earlier years. Clear? So this is how you used to calculate CS current service cost. What about interest cost, sir? Interest cost calculated on the defined benefit liability using same discounting rate of CSC. The discounting rate you which you, you have used for current service cost, you, you can use the same discounting rate to calculate the current uh, interest cost on the closing liability or opening liability of every year. Opening liability of every year, you have to calculate the interest cost. Okay? So, current service cost, interest cost you have to calculate. Now, what journal entry you will pass? Journal entry will be current service cost debit, interest cost debit to defined benefit obligation liability. So, this will become your employee benefit expenditure. This will become your finance cost under PNL. And this DBO will be shown under non-current liability long-term provisions. You will show them 
as long term provisions non current liability guys i hope you must got the point cleared that how we used to cal calculate the current service cost and interest cost now let us talk about the plan asset what is plan asset i told you plan asset is as good as the investment it is as good as the investment amount why we are making investment because we need the money after so many years when we'll pay the amount to the employees so right now we'll start contributing to the investment contributing means making investment small small amount of investment that is called contribution okay so making investment in a small small amounts is called contribution so this is the contribution made by employer every year every year we need to make the contribution to the plan asset so whenever you do the contribution what general entry you will pass the contribution general entry will be plan asset debit to bank plan asset debit to bank this is the contribution this is the contribution okay and the second one is on such contributions that means on such investment amount you will earn the finance income you will earn, earn the interest income basically so contribution you have to make and then you will earn the finance income the overall income on such investments so how to book the income for booking the income again the income will be accumulated in the same investment the, it is it, it is to be reinvested we are assuming that the income will be reinvested in the same uh, plan asset so uh, by recording the income the plan asset will be increased to income it will be treated as income understood or not so you have to understand that we have to calculate the finance income also but now how to calculate the finance income we have this thing and for this i have some questions also for this i have some questions also i will tell you how to create how to calculate the plan asset finance income also not to understand the plan asset treatment look at the question properly now in this question see there is a company anupam limited the fair value of the plan asset was 2 lakh uh, as on 1st april so opening plan asset is 2 lakh on 1st april 2009 the plan paid out the benefits of 25 and received inward contribution of 55 now what is the meaning of this paid out benefit and received inward contribution received inward contribution means making investment and paid out the benefits means we sold some of the portion of the plan asset for the purpose of providing benefits to the employees see whenever we need to pay the employees we will first sell the plan asset we will first sell the plan asset so selling the plan asset means uh, like like paying paying the benefits to the employee we need to sell the plan asset for the equal amount so technically 25000 of plan asset we sold and inward contribution means 55000 of plan assets we have made a new contribution new investment on 31st march 10 the fair value of the plan asset was 224560 so this is the fair value of the plan asset closing balance so now opening balance is given closing balance is given the portion is sold the portion is invested okay what about the finance income the income on plan asset so the income on plan asset we have to calculate by this percentage uh see actuary is involved in the plan asset also so as per the actuary's estimation interest and dividend income on such investments is 10% realized gain on plan asset is 3% what is realized gain see we sold some of the plan assets portion na so we may have in we may have uh, uh what what i can say we may have uh, uh, a gain on sale of the plan asset and this is administration fund cost is minus 2% so on an average there's a expected return of 11% there's a expected return of 11% on the plan asset now what do you have to do frankly speaking simple it's it's quite simple frankly speaking you just make a account of plan asset you just make the account so the opening balance was 2 lakh opening balance was 2 lakh now we sold the plan asset on the same opening date and we have made the inward contribution on the same opening date so inward contribution of 50 or 55000 so this is contribution 55000 and this is by bank we sold the plan asset at 25000 on the same date 1st april 1st april 1st april so can you please tell me the balancing figure was on 1st april 2 lakh plus 55 Minus twenty five, so the balance is two lakh thirty thousand. So the balance as on first April was two thirty, on which we have to apply eleven percent expected return on the plan asset. So expected return on the plan asset is eleven percent. That comprise of interest, capital gain, and so other cost also. So two thirty 
into 11 percent we have to book 25,300 as the return on plan asset return on plan asset see return on plan asset will assumed to be reinvested and hence the value of the plan asset will be increased the entry is plan asset account debit to, to income okay now the closing balance of the plan asset is the the closing balance of plan asset is 240 560 240 240 560 so when you will compile this entire account uh, 2 lakh plus 55 plus 25 300 minus 25 minus 240 560 the difference is 14,740 whatever the difference if any you will get in the plan asset other than return other than contribution and uh, selling part whatever the difference you will get this is your actual loss actual loss you must have heard this uh, term actual gain or actual loss you may get sometimes you may get actual gain also when the difference arise on the debit side so the difference arise on credits uh, credit side it is actual loss that means the value of the plan asset has been has been reduced or uh, if it is found if you find it on the debit side if it is called actual gain so what whatever it is total actual gain or loss you will always charge to oci you will always charge to oci so now look at the chart look at the chart so finance income means the return on plan asset the return on plan asset finance income you have to calculate based on the expected return now how you will apply the percentage if you can look into this we apply we applied the return percentage of 11 percent on 230 and 230 was the opening figure the opening balance plus contribution on the opening date less selling on the opening date and hence the net effect of opening date we took and we applied 11 percent sometimes the date of contribution and date of sale may be the year end may be the year end now if the contribution is placed on year end and the, uh, the, so, the plan is sold on year end that means you have to calculate the interest only on the opening 2 lakh amount because in the entire year only 2 lakh was due only 2 lakh was outstanding in the entire amount so the 2 lakh will be 11% uh, uh, will be applied on 2 lakh so when you will apply 11% on 2 lakh whenever the contribution and the sold is done at the year end but if the contribution and sold is done at the year beginning you will apply the 11 percentage after adding and deducting understood or not there is one more uh, thing that uh, that it may uh, it may be done in the mid of the year but institute is not generally asking this thing so i am i am just cutting it down this is the part where we have assumed uh, where where institute may give you like uh, the contribution is uh, the contribution is made in the mid of the year and the plan asset is sold in the mid of the year if this happens then you have to apply this thing but this is not actually happened nowadays in the ICI question no question is there in the module RTP MTP so I am not discussing this thing so if the contribution is made and benefits are paid at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year then take the annual rate but what you have to do what you have to do uh, you just uh, you just understand that rate to be applied on opening balance or rate to be applied on opening balance plus contribution minus benefits it depends now whenever uh, when you apply opening or rate or rate on opening balance when the contribution and benefits are paid at the end of the year at beginning okay and if you are paying them at beginning then apply the rate on the opening balance so this is how you use to calculate the income portion guys are you understanding or not so if you got any difference in this plan asset account the actual gain or loss will be trans transferred to oci okay all right now what is the other thing remeasurement what is that remeasurement remeasurement define benefit obligation and plan asset first of all plan asset plan asset shall be measured at fair value at each balance sheet date whenever you want to measure the plan asset at balance sheet date measure them at closing balance okay closing balance of fair value the closing balance should be fair value and once you measure at fair value if there is any difference arise that difference is known as actual gain or loss and you transfer it to oci in the same way you have to remeasure the defined benefit obligation also you have to remeasure the defined benefit obligation also now now look at the look at the dbo account look at the defined benefit obligation liability account in this liability account first of all by current service cost you re, you recognize the expense first of all then by interest cost you recognize the interest also see whenever you recognize the expenses this uh, the the next effect will be the credit effect will be the dbo liability 
now uh the closing balance the closing balance closing balance must be at fair value so whatever the fair value you have to record if in this account if you find any difference the difference will be treated as actual gain or loss and same the actual gain or loss shall be transferred to oci now whatever the actual gain or loss you found in uh, remeasurement of plan asset and defined benefit obligation you have to reclassify uh, you cannot reclassify such oci to the pnl it will never be reclassified to pnl even un understood or not so every every time you transfer the actual gain or loss on defined benefit obligation and plan asset to oci and it will not be reclassified to pnl guys have you understood or not now what is this service cost past service cost past service cost arises when there is a when there is a, a retrospective amendment in the plan example earlier i announced to give you 1% of the final salary that is a benefit i announced the benefit as 1% of the final salary after 10 years okay that was announced 3 years back now 3 years has been done now the remaining years are 7 years only now i am amending the plan i am revising the plan now instead of 1 year 1% i will give you 2% that means i am giving you more benefit so if i will give you more benefit i have to record more cost i have to record more expenses so i have to record more expense to give you more benefit are you guys understanding or not so in the last 3 years what i have done i have recorded expenditure based on 1% only but now i announced 2% so i actually could should have recognized the 2% uh, expenses in the last 3 years also so the additional benefit which i should recognize retrospectively is known as past service cost so past service cost means the additional amount of benefit the additional amount of benefit that belongs to the past years but could not be recognized in the past year because we have made the modification today only so that is called past service cost now what you will do with the past service cost past service cost is entirely treated as the expense today so what is the journal entry you will do past service cost debit to defined benefit obligation liability so past service cost also you have to book as a liability guys are you guys understanding or not so you have to book the past service cost as a liability okay simple now the curtailment and settlement what is this curtailment and settlement curtailment and settlement means it is just the reversal of past service cost and the past service cost we have made some modifications in the favor of employee where we have to book extra cost but under curtailment and settlement we are reducing the benefits or we are cancelling the plan we are cancelling the uh, defined benefit plan so if we are cancelling the defined benefit plan the liability will be reduced of course the liability will be reduced now please try to understand suppose i have three different different segments or i have three different units unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 in all these three units i have some employees in unit 1 i have 50 employees unit 2 50 employees unit 3 50 employees now i'm shutting down my unit 3 i'm i'm discontinuing my unit 3 business so by shutting down my unit 3 business i have cancelled the defined benefit plan for my unit 3 employees so i want to cancel the defined benefit plan for my unit 3 employees but i am expecting that my unit 3 employees will ask me the compensation in cash because i am cancelling their plan so i am expecting that by shutting down the unit by cancelling their defined benefit plan they will ask me the compensation so under curtailment and settlement curtailment means reducing the reducing the obligation and settlement means giving them compensation so curtailment means reducing reducing the benefits either cancelling or reducing and settlement means giving compensation giving compensation to employees so it's quite simple it's quite simple if i'm cancelling or reducing the benefit the liability will be re uh, the reversed it means debited till now i have created the liability dbo created dbo created but now because of curtailment the dbo liability will be debited now whether i am paying any compensation yes then to bank account and whatever the gain i achieve that is called gain on curtailment and such gain on curtailment will be transferred to pnl will be transferred to pnl guys are you understanding or not so that is called curtailment and settlement now i hope you must got the point so overall if i give you full summary if i give you full summary pnl 
OCI. Under OCI, you will charge actuarial gain or loss on DBO and actuarial gain loss on plan assets. Under p and there is one employee benefit expense head. And under this head, you will charge current service cost, past service cost, current service cost, past service cost and gain on curtailment. There is one more heading that is finance cost and under finance cost, you will charge interest cost minus return on plan asset, return on plan asset deducted by return on plan asset. So in this way, you have to record all these expenses understood or not. And one more thing, one more thing should I, I should write that under balance sheet, under balance sheet, under non current liability, you will record defined benefit obligation liability minus plan asset. Yes, the plan asset need not be shown separately in the balance sheet. It is to be deducted from the DBO. And then finally, it is called net liability. Sir, it may be net asset also. Yes, it may be net asset. If it is net asset, then you, you can show it on non current asset. Okay, so in this way, you, you book these expenses, incomes in different places and assets on uh, presentation of asset liabilities at in the balance sheet. Now, the last but not least, short term employee benefits. Nee, see, in short term employee benefits, there are so many type of short term employee benefits like salary, incentives, bonus and all. But here we are uh, understanding these two only short term compensated absence and the profit sharing bonus profit sharing and bonus plan. See what is profit sharing and bonus plan employee may be entitled uh, in the profit part of the company or in the form of bonus also. So recognizing the ex recognize the expense and not the distribution of profit. Suppose you allow to your employee one of the key manager employee that uh, he will get 5% of the net profit. Okay, now whatever the 5% will be, that is called, that is expense, not the distribution of profit because employee is not the shareholder. Okay, so whatever the amount of profit you are distributing to the employee, it is expense only, it is not the dividend. And you will recognize this in the p &L when there is a constructive or legal obligation to pay and it is reliably estimated that it can be made. So there are two things, you recognize the expense only when there is a constructive or legal obligation as well as when you can reliably estimate such expenditure. Now, this is quite important. This is quite important. Uh, short term compensated absences. This is all about leave encashments, leaves. See, every employee uh, or uh, in the corporate world, employees are uh, given the leaves. Employees are given the leaves. Leaves means basically the holidays. Uh, uh, these are the, uh, the holidays without deducting any payment, without deducting any salary. Okay. So, to be very frank, if the employee is uh, allowed the sum of the leaves and he can take some of the leaves, his salary will not be deducted. It is called short, short term compensated absence. Now, suppose I have been given 30 holidays, 30 extra leaves other than Sundays in a year. Now, if I am if I'm taking these leaves, my salary won't be deducted. But suppose I have not availed all 30 leaves in a year. In a year, I availed only 25 leaves. And my five leaves are are not yet been taken and the year has been done. So whether my employer has been, uh, whether my employer is allowing me to carry forward these five leaves, if not, these are called non accumulating leaves. So whenever the employer is not allowing you to carry forward your, uh, uh, your, your leaves, allowed leaves, it is called non accumulating leaves. So technically my employee has worked five days more in a year because I have given him 30 days as a leave and he took only 25 leaves. So he has, uh, he has worked for five days more, but I'm not compensating him because I'm not allowing him to carry forward those five extra leaves in the next year. So no, no, no accounting treatment for such case. But if for those five leaves, he worked extra in my company. If suppose I'm giving the benefit for those five leaves, for those five extra uh, days, he worked in my company. Suppose I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the benefit to my employee. Now the benefit can be given in two types. First, I will pay him extra salary for four, for those five days. That means the cash benefit that is called accumulating wasted benefits. That is the cash compensation. You have been allowed 30 leaves in a year. 
you took for 25 leaves you took actually 25 leaves now the five are unused leaves so for unused leaves i will give you cash compensation so if this is the case i have to book extra five days expense in my books of accounts as a provision because obviously you will take you will you will ask me for the cash now the second type is i will not give you the cash benefit for those five leaves five unused leaves i allowed you to carry forward these five unused leaves in the next year technically in the next year you will again get 30 30 leaves and these five will be carry forward so in all now in the next year you can take 35 leaves so i am giving you the benefit of carry forwarding the leaves in that case now in the next year you can take 35 holidays 35 leaves and i will not deduct your salary but how can I be sure that you will take all those five leaves extra in the next year? Maybe you will not take once again. So I will create the expense this time based on the estimation I will get. Make the provision for estimated leaves carry forward and to be used in the next period. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one question on this. I'll tell you one question on this. We have a question on this. Okay, see this is the question. Mr. Niranjan is working for Infotech Limited. His annual salary is 30 lakh. Number of working days 300 hours. Leaves allowed to Mr. Niranjan in the year is 10 year, 10 days. Mr. Niranjan took 7 days leaves in the first year. So his, uh, his unused leaves are 3 days and he is allowed to carry forward these 3 days leaves in the next year. So technically in the next year Mr. Niranjan has 10 allowed and 3 carry forward overall 13 days. Okay. So in the next year he has took, uh, taken all 13 days leaves. Based on the past experience, Infotech assumes that Niranjan will avail the unutilized leaves of 3 days of 10, 11 in 11, 12. This is the important line. Based on this line, I will create the extra expense in the first year. So see, my first year's, my first year's employee benefit expense is not only 30 lakh, it should be 30 lakh plus Three, day, uh, 3 days extra because 3 days Niranjan worked for me in my company in this year. So I will recognize. 330 lakh divided by 300 days average. So that is 10,000. So 10,000 into 3. I will recognize 30,000 rupees as extra salary in the first year. So I will recognize 3 lakh 30,000. Okay. Because Niranjan worked for me in the current year. Niranjan worked for me 3 days extra. So I have to book extra expenditure of 3 lakhs, uh, 30,000 rupees. Because it is a matching principle. He gave me the service. I have to record the expenditure. Now, it is written that Niranjan will avail all three unutilized leaves in the next year. So, in the next year, yes, it happened and uh, I have to book just 29,70,000 in the next year only. Because in the next year, Niranjan gave me services lesser than three years. Because Niranjan took 13 days of leave in the next year. So, technically, in the first year, I got higher services from Niranjan as compared to the next year. So, in the first year, my expense should be higher as compared to the next year. So in the next year, I will not recognize. I will, I will, I will recognize only twenty nine lakh seventy thousand. So look, uh, what is the entry? Employee benefit expense of first year three lakh thirty lakh thirty thousand. But I actually paid thirty lakh only, and the remaining is provision for leave encashment thirty thousand. In the next year, I will book expense only of twenty nine seventy because Niranjan gave me lesser services, and this provision of first year will be reversed thirty thousand, and I paid actually three lakh. Suppose question says Mr. Niranjan will avail. Two days leaves. Suppose, suppose two days leaves. Then in the first year only, I will book only extra 20,000 based on two extra days. Yes, Niranjan took three days. Uh, Niranjan took only seven days of holiday and the three days are ut unutilized and to be carried forward in the next year. But I know that out of these three days, one, one day will be left and Niranjan will be able to take only two days, uh, will be able to utilize only two days only. So I will book the expenditure based on two days only in the current year. Even though I got the service of three days, but I will book the two days expenditure only because I am I'm expecting that Niranjan will not avail the full three days. Are you guys understanding or not? And hence, I told you that make the provision as per the estimated lease carry forward and to be used in the next period per day salary into number of uh, leaves to be utilized. So in this way, you, you can uh, book the short term compensated absences. Now, guys, uh, these are the most important questions which you should do by yourself 
in some of the question there are some qr codes also there are the qr code that qr code means i have discussed this question and when you will scan this qr code uh, you will get the entire video on this question if you want you want you uh, want uh, to uh, want me to discuss this question then you can just scan this qr code okay so do all these questions do all these questions and uh, complete your indias 19 okay so i hope you like this lecture please guys watching the lecture oh, it's very good okay okay it it will definitely help you but not commenting on the lecture is not a good thing from your side because i am actually doing so much uh, efforts for you all so please especially students who are not from hindi belt please try to understand uh, uh, comment your feedback also for all these english lectures so guys i tell i want to tell you one more thing uh in this indias chart revision series i took indias 21 i took indias 33 and i took indias 19 so uh other than other than that other than all these three indias i already uploaded english videos on financial instrument on business combination consolidation and uh, on uh, indias 115 on indias 115 Re uh, revenue 116 the lease modification and sale and lease back part uh indias 28 indias triple uh, 1 so i already uploaded the big topics i already uploaded in english lectures also english english language also if you want the link of those videos just check the description below so now it's the time to say all the very best to all of you because uh, now i won't be able to uh, upload more lectures for this attempt definitely i'll try to upload a few more lectures for the next attempt okay so for this attempt this uh, the, uh, i i hope that you like the entire journey of these chart revision lectures along with that if you haven't watched my fr exemption series which is an english language which covers business combination consolidation joint venture associate indias 115 116 please watch it and the description in the description you will get the youtube link playlist link for that and all the very best guys hope you have liked the lecture please do comment your feedback also so that i can improve myself also thanks a lot guys thanks a lot thank you so much bye bye take care god bless you jai mata di allah hafiz